International documentaries are shedding light on the struggle for empowerment worldwide. The movies premiered at the Risen Sundance uh, Film Festival in Utah, offering some perspective on three different societies. Viewers Penelope Pulo has more. If you've just tuned in, our top story this hour, voters in the West African state of Ghana are choosing a new president. The documentary, An African Election, by filmmaker Jareth Mertz, is an inside look at the 2008 presidential elections in Ghana. For three months, Mertz follows the candidates of the two main political parties and he profiles their struggle for power. The stakes are high for the people of Ghana. Many suffer from extreme poverty and hope their candidate will change their lives, like this Ghanaian farmer. So before the country became better and everybody enjoys health, education and food. Ghanaians in large numbers go to the polls. Ghanaians do not talk in general, uh, talk about who they're going to vote for. It's secret. They call it the power of the thumb. The results are disputed. Allegations of stolen ballots and vote rigging excite passions and people threaten to take to the streets. The military stands by ready to quell an uprising. For a while, no one knows what will happen. And yes, live ammunition, people shooting around us. But Ghanaians remain calm and order prevails. Mertz says his documentary shows that democracy is as strong as its electorate and can take hold if it is nourished. We don't know really about Africa. We talk about it in a romantic sense, but America's it. In the Black Power mixtape 1967-1975, Swedish filmmaker Göran Olsson presents the Black Power movement in America from a Swedish point of view. He uses archive footage of iconic African-American activists of the period shot by Swedish reporters. Speaking in Stockholm, Stokely Carmichael, a Black Power activist, criticizes Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for advocating nonviolence and integration. He only made one fallacious assumption. In order for nonviolence to work, your opponent must have a conscience. The United States has none. Accused of being an accomplice to murder, Angela Davis, then a black radical, talks to a Swedish reporter from prison about racism and raising a fist against social oppression. You ask me, you know, whether I approve of violence. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, whether I approve of guns. I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, some very, very good friends of mine were killed by bombs, bombs that were planted by racists. Olson says foreign reporters had unprecedented access to those activists. When you're outside from a very remote place, you could walk into certain you know, communities or you know, rooms and ask you know, silly or naive uh, uh, questions and get really good answers because people understand that these Swedes, they don't really understand everything. We have to ex be generous and explain. Olson added voiceovers of some of the activists looking back at historic moments. Harry Belafonte is one of them. He spoke to us about the Black Power mixtape. To have been selected by my colleagues and, and others to see this film that we've worked so hard on is a, a reward that's uh, quite overwhelming. Olson says his film is still relevant. I think what we learned from the Black Power movement uh, and this resonates today and to every ethnic group or minority or gender or whatever. Everybody knows that you're entitled to, to your rights and you're not supposed to sit down and wait for someone to come along and give you your rights. Penelope Pulu, VOA News.